All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the full moon in Scorpio lunar eclipse, also known as a blood moon. We'll get into all of that. Uh, Monday, May 16th, 2022, 25 degrees, 17 minutes. The high peak is at 9.13 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So let's go through what this moon is about, and then I'll upload another video on the horoscope for every sign. All right. So I'll have that for you guys. Now, I will post this write-up for this full moon lunar eclipse reading in the community page okay so I'll put that up after um, I upload this video all right so all right we we have this full moon lunar eclipse happening in Scorpio it is a total lunar eclipse and the blood moon refers to the color that the moon has at this particular time okay and the full moon in May is also known as the flower moon. So we know we're in spring and we're about pretty much yeah, in the middle of spring right now. And we'll be able to see the lunar eclipse on Sunday tonight and also tomorrow night. All right, so that should be a really beautiful view. I will be looking out my window at it. The full moon is, like I said, in Scorpio, 25 degrees, 17 minutes and it's in the 12th house. If you do meditation, you can do a meditation that lasts longer than 17 minutes. That would be great, but you can check out my uh, other channel for that. The 12th house has to do with the unconscious, or the unconscious mind, you can look at it that way as well. That's where the moon is in, in the 12th house, the full moon. It can reflect the unconscious mind. It refers to suffering, evolution, which definitely will be a strong message for this full moon. We can definitely move towards that, we have that power to do that. It has to do with invisible enemies and karma. All right, if you know anything about Scorpio, that has a lot to do with it. Scorpios usually attract a lot of jealousy. Scorpios are known to be very jealous and envious, but they also can receive that energy too. So some of you might be dealing with past experiences of that, okay, having the south node uh, placement as well. All right, so let me pull up that chart here. Okay, so I know you guys can see the chart there as well. Also having the south node in Scorpio has to deal with a lot of past experiences as well. Okay, so overcoming your psychological fears and sorrows and working through and getting an understanding of life. Okay, so this is going to be very uh, inspiring for this full moon to work past your sorrows and working through an understanding of life and the life that you don't show to others. So really the hidden life as well, the 12th house is dealing with. All right. And this can also be understanding someone else's personality and understanding their level of thinking and really moving past their negative behaviors and personalities. So you might be experiencing that as well. The south node also being in the 12th house, the south node in the 12th house is a great opportunity for a person to quiet their mind, to do some kind of self-reflection and mindfulness meditation with the goal of unlocking their subconscious mind. It's a great time to be vulnerable for your healing and your growth. It's a great time to think about what has been accumulating over the last few months and even the last few years and decide what is unhealthy and what needs to end and bring an end to that. You can eliminate this through various spiritual practices. Yes, so, you know, a lunar eclipse, you don't want to pull in on the energy of the moon, but if you are experienced and you want to work with that, you can eliminate things and work through that. Now, I would say practice something like tonight, but not on the day of the lunar eclipse. That's just my personal feeling, okay? Because the energy is very strong and chaotic, so the day before is good and the day after I feel is good, all right? Do, do as you will. <laughs> so you can um, eliminate it through various spiritual practices, meditation, rituals, and prayers. 
This practice goal is to really get rid of self-sabotage, worry, overthinking, and <clears throat> and other karmic experiences that that are from your current life right now and from your past life. So it's really working through that. And very strong south node energy as well because the south node is in Scorpio and the north node is in their opposite sign Taurus. This is a planetary placement to end any kind of like separation that you may have uh, from anyone, okay? And any form of destruction from your past actions, which is your karmic debt that you're paying off. So if you keep reliving experiences or doing things a certain way, even if you realize, hey, I'm too kind here, I'm too giving here, I'm not thinking about my, my own well-being enough, or I am, but how can I do it better? How can I improve? How can I be better? This Scorpio energy will work through that because they don't want to go through that pain anymore. So you can kind of realize that, okay, yeah, I, I can really relate to that, okay? So having a strong spiritual knowledge and practice of how to use these energies can bring about more positive results in your life. It's a great opportunity for bringing in new things and for new prosperous direction for your life. So when there is, like I said, when there's any kind of eclipses, lunar eclipse, solar eclipse, you are working with chaotic energy. So this energy is trying to realign. So you might be feeling the need to also do the same thing. So if you're working with an experienced practitioner or you're an ex experienced practitioner with practicing working with the moon or any kind of meditation like that you can really devote your time to your spiritual practice in order to release these negative um, negativity and realign with more positive energy and that's happening planetarily and we're feeling that shift like i said before you can check out my yoga channel for these meditations and so on okay the meditations and different spiritual practices so the sign of Scorpio represents creation and also destruction all right so it can be a powerful sign for the transformation that is happening planetarily but also within yourself so at this time you may feel a strong pull or passion towards having a great change in your life and knowing that you're working through through that and what I didn't write down um, I might add it later, is that we know that Mercury is retrograding right now from the 10th of May till June 3rd, so it's just working through these energies and planning through it and just cleansing right now or getting rid of in the uh, lunar eclipse and then when the 3rd of June happens then you can, you know, feel that energy of moving forward, right? So it's just listening and learning right now and kind of clearing the way, right? So, like I said, like at this time, it's like a great time to feel that strong pull or that passion towards having a great change in your life. The scorpion, the scorpion brings the message of shedding one's skin. So it's a symbolistic form of releasing, right? So it's releasing what is old or what is used already and it's come to its end and it's time to move forward into the new. All right, it's like the scorpion shedding its skin, or like the snake's shedding its skin, right? So the scorp Scorpios are resourceful and resilient. So I've said before on this channel, the energy is really learning at a young age. It kind of uh, symbolizes the actual baby scorpion learning, you know, very quickly how to be self-reliant and self-efficient, right? And knowing how to do these things. Now, it might not seem that way on the outside, right? So a lot of air signs will can relate to this in Scorpio. It's like you might not brag about X, Y, and Z, but behind the scenes you're doing a lot, right? So it's a, it's a deep passion for overcoming any kind of learning obstacles. So you might be feeling that as well, a strong willingness to overcome obstacles with this mind thinking of, of a sink or swim, right? So it's kind of like, like baptism by fire in a sense, right? The Scorpio energy has the energy of the story of the phoenix. The phoenix is rising from its ashes. So it'll have this time where it's learning, it's growing, and it's overcoming, right? So after experiencing any kind of hardship, they will learn from it. They'll create a new plan and rise above their current situation. So if, he, if need be also, they will recognize, hey, I need to be the student, 
I need to study and learn this and then I'll rise above this and get to my desired uh, occasion right so you're gonna just move through that now we can look at Uranus in the fifth house all right and it can make you feel very spontaneous to travel and a lot of, there's other alignments like that too we'll get to that will make you feel like you want to travel or do something fun so some of these energies can be overwhelming and chaotic especially if the person isn't mentally balanced or is not really thinking straight so the fifth house also it will govern love and love is a deep passionate feeling and if it's misguided that's not good so it's it's uh it's a uh, a feeling of of love it's a feeling of um, amusement and pleasure the fifth house holds the leo energy of wanting to grab attention or to be the center of focus and this is a good thing it's not a bad thing so if you can work out these energies and feel more balanced then connecting to this energy is a good thing you know so if you're balanced this combination is very a positive one and also considering all the other planetary houses and we're going to discuss that so then you can kind of see okay what is said in this video how does this relate to my life and and how can I use these energies in my life okay now Saturn is in the second house in Aquarius and even though Venus is best in the second house Saturn offers you an encouragement to be kinder. This could be kinder to yourself, be more just to yourself, and be wiser in, in regards to how you're thinking towards yourself and even to others. This can inspire us to be more mindful of what is important in regards to our money and our personal resources being in the second house. Now Aquarius is always like a future mind uh, thinker here, right? So it's gonna also inspire you the ability to strengthen and deepen your relationship so this energy helps people to move past their own understanding in order to strengthen their relationships not only with themselves the way they're thinking but also with others so now let's look at two conjunctions okay so conjunctions is a union it's it's fusing energy or binding energy together okay so let's look at that all right, then I'll get back to the the, ver the vertex. So we have Jupiter conjuncts Neptune. This is happening six degrees, two minutes. So it's a very short span, but this conjunction inspires um, a strong emotion that is, can be religious in nature or idealistic. So this could be good or bad. So it can get out of control, but with this alignment, Jupiter it's very optimistic about what it's what it's about to do and the Neptune energy is very deep and spiritual right so it has this motivation for travel for arts and it's, it, it expresses itself through that and a strong desire for knowledge so the positive aspect of this combination is being spiritual being ethical and being given very compassionate so using it at its best um, highest level without manipulating it right so they're very inspired enthusiastic and optimistic so you can use this energy in a positive way in your meditation to really get clarity if you want right so you can um, feel inspired to even live your best life and to make the world a better place so not to get too carried away with this energy but just how you can do this within yourself and in your home but realizing that you're you can just um, move this frequency this thought in your mind and create that right so you don't always have to be out there you know doing the physical thing just by you existing and living your life as well now let's look at powerful Mars conjuncts Neptune so this is happening one degree 31 minutes and the need to search for higher understanding of self life and ideals and this is such a great one to work with because it's really helping with the chaotic energy okay so a person can find or not find the answers that they're searching for with this placement so learning not to be too hard on yourself if the answers doesn't come to you right away look at the answers that are with you right now and what you can work with because later on those ideas and those answers will come along so it's a great thing to remember the negative part of this placement is being you know confused or feeling disoriented and moving away from reality so sometimes when we can get you know too idealistic or spiritual with the Neptune energy 
you know, not everyone's going to be on your page. So this feeling has to be for your own um, self-peace within, okay? In a creative mind, though, this is great for working within the arts, like photography, film, and fashion, expressing yourself this way with your fighter Mars energy, that strong um, energy uh, of protecting yourself and just expressing yourself and go-getter and going after what you want. And the Neptune is the very spiritual side, you know, so it's just expressing um, different different things. So it's, it's going to be a really successful placement for someone if we can manage our own energy, right? So now let's look at the energy of the sign and the moon. So this alignment, whether it's in your birth chart or around this time right now and feeling influenced by the planetary shifts, right? So this time, right, you could feel um, an unbalanced mind and it can be dis dis uh, destructive, okay? So the energy can feel that way, right? So if your mind is not balanced, if you're not thinking clearly and in like a peaceful, um, wise mind, then it can be very destructive, okay? Everyone is texting me, messaging me because it's the full moon, like, what are you doing? What ritual? You know, so <laughs> I'm like, okay, I just text you back, but I'm going to get back to you guys, okay? So um, days, and I'm going to put something on um, TikTok as well, so I have two people texting me now. Okay, so days leading up to any eclipse and a few days after we can feel this chaotic um, energy and it could also um, be inspiring and, and a powerful energy as well. This full moon is a water sign so we have to remember that so we can bring up strong emotions within us, right, that we are working through. So it's so important to have like a daily practice of like letting go of things right before you go to sleep and kind of set the imagi imaginative mind and create in your mind what you want your outcome to be. So it's so important as a daily simple practice. It doesn't have to be a big full out like, you know, practice. Um, unless, you know, you, you know, hey, this day I can do this and I'm going to do it, <laughs> right? So we can feel these energies we know leading up to any kind of particular um, planetary movement, okay? Whether it's a retrograde or a full moon or a new moon. So we can feel this, right? This full moon is, like I said, it's a water sign, so it's going to bring up those strong emotions. And Scorpios are known for having a great memory. They have really good memory of detail, um, excellent memory. So this sign also can hold on to resentment for betrayal and wrongdoings against them. It's good to remember that this is a person that you can't trust, but not to be so controlling or overthinking. It's not good. And certain things to learn to let go of. Now in older age, you know, some Scorpius master this and really learn to let go of it, right? So I like to call it rightfully upset, but not letting it control your happiness, your life. You can see this energy play out um, in negative actions from others or even from within yourself. So you'd have to kind of like realign and calm yourself down or something, right? So however, you can use this energy to recognize your own shortcomings, yes, right? and um, the wrongdoings of others and use it to inspire you to create a positive story. Recognize the reality, but create a positive story, a positive ending for, your, for, you, for that experience, right? And then create a new beginning for your new life for yourself, right? Now, we're coming to the end, yay! So it's best to use this energy for this eclipse at this time to reflect on the challenges that are happening right now in your life. What challenges are you going through right now? You can write them down. That's a good practice. Okay, what are these challenges that are happening right now, right, in my life? And what was happening before that led up to it, right? So you're you're taking account of that so that you won't make those mistakes again, right? So what what has happened leading up to this full moon eclipse? right because we know what happened during the new moon eclipse what's happening now has things shifted to be better and then create a solution around that and remember we're in mercury retrograde so we're we're we're, we're, we're listening more we're learning more we're understanding more we're gathering the information the receipts right we're gathering all the information so this particular full moon lunar eclipse is a great time to rise above our illusions and our idealism with this 12th house energy, right? And we want to reclaim our energy. So reclaim your energy, become more resourceful, 
um, be willing to learn, find new ways to recreate yourself and work towards renewing your energy all right so i really hope that you enjoy this reading this is for all all the signs okay can benefit from this and the next video i'm going to upload is going to be on the the um reading your horoscope okay so i just split these into two videos so they're not so long so i hope you guys enjoy this if anything i said in here you relate to i know it was good information i enjoyed looking up this moon and seeing what could be done so um, yeah, tonight, Sunday night, definitely is good. Um, tomorrow, you can definitely, um, you know, think about what it is. And then, the, you know, the day after, I say, you know, because when the energy is strong, especially at the high peak, um, it is very strong. So throughout the day uh, on Monday, you can definitely work with the energy, you know. Um, and it's more of thought and reflecting, but not pulling down on the energy. And it's a great one to also get rid of negativity that's thrown at you or negativity in your own mind or negativity around you. It's a great moon to do that. So I hope you use these energies to just kind of clear and cleanse and it's very powerful and, and defensive energy. Um, Scorpio is most definitely ruled by, by um, Mars. I really feel that. And of course Pluto as well, but definitely from all the Scorpios I know, you don't mess with them because they're they're not playing. <laughs> okay, so we'll get this chart going in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Please click like. Enjoy the full moon uh, lunar eclipse. Um, it's good to look at, but the energy is very strong. So, you know, usually uh, in some cultures you stay inside, mostly especially at the high peak because the energy is so strong and, and chaotic, but it's very beautiful to look at the moon and just you know enjoy the night so i will see you guys thank you so much for watching happy full moon lunar eclipse i'll see you guys next time and happy birthday to anyone celebrating birth birthdays around this time peace